The big Halo blog just went live talking about the season one outcomes, feedback, and changes that are coming with season two. A ton of information to get into this video, guys. So let's just jump right into it. So again, these are all the changes coming for season two, not right now, when season two releases on May 3rd. So we'll just jump right into it. So for the audio scene, the ability to hear opponents shield recharge sound will be reduced to prevent providing too much information to player's location. I can understand that. There's a lot of audio cues that happen within this game. Also, the volume of the Grunk birthday party sound will be increased within campaign. Multiplayer, so we get some good amount of details right here, guys. We have Catalyst coming in, which we've announced previously. Uh, King of the Hills being added to multiple playlists. Attrition will be added to multiple playlists. And also in Attrition, a revived player will be able to move immediately after spawning back in. And also the motion tracker slash radar uh, will have the outer edge detection enabled for shooting and sprinting in social playlists. So basically it's kind of speeding up that process of just finding the kill so you don't have to do so much searching around. Now big news here guys, talking about Big Team Battle and Jess Steitzer looking to return as well. Saying we have a new map breaker coming in, looking forward to that. I'll definitely have breakdowns when that goes live. Jeff Steiser's voice is returning to call out player earned medals. So that's be great. So we still have Agrina doing her thing, but all the calls of like double kill, triple kill, overkill. That's all with Jeff Steiser coming back. So I'm all for that. It also resolved the issue when it comes to weapon racks not being working properly. Uh, a matchmaking issue right here as well. Uh, saying that they've changed the way that your CSR is gained, where instead of per session, you see like that bar go up and down, it's after each match. So get a little more accuracy of how much you lost or gained per match. Uh, some changes coming to the custom games and Forge, saying that they are addressing custom bugs and more coming down the road as well. So just kind of help clean it up a little bit. Hopefully it's more functional and crashes less. Uh, it's personal AI in Spartan Cheddar, saying they're kind of working on trying to find a proper balance so they're not so chattery on things like that. The big thing for me, as a PC player, saying PC, notable stability improvements the team has resolved dozens of PC crashes, which I'm like, thank God, that's one of my biggest issues I wanted to see fixed with season two, that's looking to be addressed as well. A big thing also that the, with the sandbox here, that the melee networking kind of thing has been fixed up a bit, improved at least I will say, then that melee fights should be more consistent with opponents phasing through each other with less whiffing and less when melee shouldn't be sort of connected. Basically saying that like, it should be a little more consistent with your melees. The weapons here, two big ones right here, by the way, is saying global melee damage it decreased by 10% on all weapons will require the mangler to land two shots and a beat down for a kill. That is a big, big change for you guys here. So it looks like they're not really changing much when it comes to the ammo or the spawning of the mangler, but they're looking to just make it so it's a two shot melee instead of a one shot melee. I can get down with that. I do like how powerful the mangler is. It does make using the weapon very fun. There's some really cool techniques, but it's a little too common. And so I think maybe to not really mess with like the power fantasy of the mangler, they're going with the two shot beat down instead of a one shot. See how that plays out. They also mentioned here that the Ravager's base non-charged shot will see a damage increase as well. If you guys don't know, you have to hit three direct burst shots onto a player to get a kill with a Ravager. That means nine total shots in total landing directly on a player. Obviously, that doesn't usually happen, so it takes about four, sometimes five bursts to actually get a kill. So that should be seeing some improvements there. The friend or foe icons were with the outlines. Some changes here as well saying the system will now have options allowing players to modify the opacity and thickness based on their preferences. So could this possibly mean that you can like remove them if you want to? That'd be kind of interesting. I wouldn't do that personally, but you never know. Uh, we have some equipment changes as well saying the drop wall will see slight performance increases. I'm assuming that the panels will probably be a little bit more dur durable as they don't really play much of a factor right now when it comes to playing uh, Halo Infinite. Also, I love this one saying the overshield will provide slightly more shielding. I love this. The overshield is just a little too weak in my opinion. It doesn't really feel like a game change like camo or rockets or something like that. Overshield can help you get like an extra kill, but then usually like in competitive games, you get called out, you get cleaned up after that. So I'm glad to see the overshield is getting a bit of a buff. Vehicles here are also changing a little bit, saying that the chopper collision splatter damage will be increased to its vehicle splattering glory. So you'll be able to get those splatters much more consistently. Consistently, The Banshee's agility and damage output will be increased to improve the role as a strike fighter, which I'm all for that. Thank God, I hope that the Banshee bomb actually does 
act like a bomb and damage players and also that the warhawk and razorback should be more resilient to flipping and bouncing i'm definitely for that i would definitely like to see a little bit more resilience when it comes to damage taken for those vehicles uh especially for the warhawk i think the razorback's fine but the warhawk especially they also state that they have another outcomes blog coming from the live team which focuses on customization the shop battle pass progression challenges events theater observer mode and a lot more in the near future so we definitely will be making a video about that on this channel guys so make sure you subscribe to keep yourself up to date there now for some feedback and response about season one here first to talk about the academy and they said that a lot of players would like to see a longer or unlimited weapon drills and the multiplayer team response we agree and you can expect an endless weapon drills to come with season two so that's definitely very awesome especially also when it comes to arena maps and modes saying the feedback desire more arena maps and modes obviously uh saying they bring attrition back for matchmaking in the quick play playlist and also feedback saying the attrition that players wanted the ability to move in response about the modes they do talk about having king of the hill come back but it's like an updated version so they have like an updated version of king of the hill and a classic version of king of the hill Again, we'll just kind of see how it plays out. They also say that over the season, our goal is to rotate in some new playlists with some fun variants we've been play testing a lot lately. So we have rotational playlists coming in. So like new stuff to do, maybe like every week, every other week or something like that. Not, that's, I mean, that's, I'm surprised it's not there already. We have that new mode as well called Elimination. And it says it will be making its season two debut. When the mode lands, it will show up in matchmaking as a rotational playlist and will be made available in custom games. As some eagle-eyed Halo players have noticed that there is a medic achievement and I know a lot of people love their achievements and they said that it's in the works right now. Once it does go live, you will be able to get that medic achievement. So don't worry, you will be able to complete your achievements. Here they also state a change to the motion tracker for season two as well, saying that they've added in the edge functionality of it for all social playlists. So it's fundamental change to how the radar works. So this means that players who are sprinting, shooting or operating vehicles but are just out of range will now show up on the outer fringe of the motion tracker. The inside of the tracker is going to be exactly the same as well. They also state that the uh, arena's motion tracker will be 18 meters, which I think it is right now, but the functional edge of it being 30 meters, while big team battles will be 24 meters, with the functional edge being at 40. I'm sure this will just help kind of speed up the process a little bit, or speed up the gameplay a bit as well. Um, it's probably just become more like a faded edge on the outside of the radar, right? not rather than giving your direct location which would be definitely a bit too much information uh this would be an interesting change let's see how it plays out i mean i mainly play like you know uh ranked arena with no radar uh so i don't really play a whole lot of social but when i do i play big team battle which i think would be very beneficial to have that extended radar to the the edges right there being useful so again we'll see how it plays out here we get some insight about the map breaker that's coming for season two as well as they mentioned here uh, it will feature a giant moving laser that cuts across the center of the map and destroys anything that gets caught in its beam so it's like kind of like a Almost like, I say like a battlefield tornado in a way, but like in a BTB map. So that'd be kind of interesting to see how that plays out. And saying that it's a tighter and faster pacing uh, BTB map that feels different than anything we currently have in Infinite as in those three maps that we have right now. And so it doesn't really sound like it's gonna be very favorable to vehicle play, which the Infinite BTB maps still are not that favorable to BT for vehicle play as a definitely find yourself kind of like getting channeled down these specific routes compared to like say like standoff from halo 3 right where you have these big open fields where you can kind of just roam around however you like or like how blood gulch was as well i would like to see more freedom come with these vehicle play for btb hopefully we get that updated with the coming seasons of halo infinite also you know how btb has like the squad feature but when you go in with friends you actually never match with your squad well it sounds like they're updating that as well for season two Saying that this update will prioritize your fire team members appearing in your squads so you can see your friends within the lineup, which is the start of the game. Then also with larger size fire teams, it will still leave chances of the odd Spartan out, but in general, you should generally see yourself together as you come off a of spawn, which is like 
Great. I feel like that should have been there in the first place. But you know, not everything's sunshine and roses because we have another thing that's like we heard your information and we're working on it kind of stuff. Talking about the Pelican drops, how they can kind of be out of sync where one team can get a, like a vehicle and the other team doesn't. But the Saber Harris and Pelican drops in BTB can indeed fall out of sync and we've identified the root cause. We'll share more on this as a fix for this gets closer, but please know that we're tracking this and we'll get it addressed in the future release. Now for your ranked players, this sounds very disappointing though, because they say right here that they want to add in a champion rank. And also people are just general confusion about how the CSR goes up and down. And they stay here that they're looking to put in a champion rank in a future season down the road, no roadmap by the way, uh, but currently not in the uh, near future. It sounds like so maybe like season three, maybe season four, something like that. And then they talk about CSR, which they refer to back to their ranked blog, which we talked about, which didn't really solve a lot of issues when it comes to the understanding of the whole situation and why things are the way they are. Uh, but they said that they, since they made that update of like per match, your rank will go up and down rather than have your entire session showcasing that, which I'm just like, no, people want to know like why like rank ups happen and why you get such little CSR when you win games and do well compared to like other games where it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. In fact, I made a short talking about this. What? I gained that much CSR in that lobby, dude. No freaking way. I gained like 15 CSR. <laughs> a gold four, silver two, got one onyx in that lobby, and then a platinum two, and I gained like 15 CSR. <laughs> Dude, this doesn't make any sense. And for this most recent game I played, you know, I'm a Diamond 2, played against Diamond 4, Diamond 3, and an Onyx with a Platinum 1 in there, and a bunch of other Diamond players. Rank match win percentage was 54% chance of my team winning. So about as even as you can get. But you wanna know how much CSR I got? Five. I got five CSR. I just don't understand how the system works. And I know it's all based off your MMR, which is hidden, and your CSR is kind of like your basic average, but your CSR lets you know basically who you're playing against, and sometimes it just doesn't line up properly. I also talk about a like a reconnect or a rejoin feature for a lot of players since like people are crashing or disconnecting a lot of times. They basically say we're looking into it, but we'll see if there's some way we can kind of help alleviate these issues. But nothing about a reconnect or a rejoin, and I don't really expect to see that happen anytime soon. Now, also, they bring up like an idea for a match composer. They state that's not really happening anytime soon. Saying they're looking to you know rotate out the least popular modes, bring in the popular modes, and you know kind of keep it fresh at least a little bit more with season two. Of course, uh, a match composer would be great. Or especially for social modes, but it looks like it's not really happening. I've seen a lot of comments about this saying a desire to opt out of crossplay, and they basically just say no. And it looks like they're looking to focus more on their anti cheat system right here rather than try to disable crossplay, which honestly, I think that's where more of the effort is needed is to have better anti cheat rather than canceling out like crossplay. This next section talks about the desire for original server selection for you people in less popular areas, especially in like Australia that they mentioned specifically that, yeah. You can understand how you want to have a server selection option for you guys at all as well, but it sounds like saying including consideration uh, features like a server selection similar to the MCC or search preferences in Halo 5 will be like further down the road, so definitely not with Season 2. Now some custom games and Forge news coming for you guys right here. So you're talking about having more adjustability when it comes to custom games. 343 says yes, absolutely, we'll definitely do that and uh, we'll let you know when it happens. Big news as well, custom game browser, bam, in the works right now, guys. As I mentioned here, saying the custom game browser is something we are deeply passionate about too. And we're happy to say that the team is in early stages of production for it. So it will happen. Hopefully it comes with season three when it comes to Forge's release. That's when it's really needed. Uh, but until then, just kind of have to wait. Of course, once we get some concrete information, I'll get, let you guys know on this channel. And they basically state with uh, the Forge news that uh, they're working on it. Here they actually talk about networking and the desync issue, the big issue that's been having a lot of problems for a lot of players out there. And they state that they really kind of fix up the desync issue, mainly with the melees, not really much with the shooting and getting shot around the corners, as that's more of a lag compensation thing, as that mid-season update where they prioritize pings definitely helped that situation a bit. Uh, but they spent this entire section just talking about melees and the accuracy of the melee itself. Um, so they just didn't really address getting shot around the corners, which they did talk about in this previous blog post, which we covered on the channel. Uh, so I don't expect to see much in the way of changes when it comes to getting shot around a corner, but hopefully, you know, the better pings people get that it'll happen less. Now, like we mentioned earlier about the Ravager getting a, a 
damage increase to its blast radius, as well as the mangler damage change and the melee change. Uh, they also talk about things like the pulse carbine, the plasma pistol, as well as the commando here. Basically, they say that after the mangler and ravager melee changes for season two, they were going to reevaluate the pulse carbine, plasma pistol, and commando, which I'm like, dude, do you really have to like, really look into like what's going on with the plasma pistol because i'm like the tracking on that weapon is awful for players and they know that it needs to be buffed i just don't know why that didn't get thrown in maybe it's just too many things that need to get fixed all at once but that plasma pistol man like that's a pretty straightforward fix i think another thing they actually address the magnification zoom issue when it comes to the sensitivity saying it doesn't really feel the same as it did in previous halos and they're like yeah we did that on purpose i guess i just didn't really tell us a whole lot but it did say if you want your aim to feel exactly how it feels like no matter what uh, zoom sensitivity you have these are the sensitivities that you want to run with for these different zoom sensitivities as well so basically 1.3 1.2 something like that is what you want to have for your sensitivities i definitely did this for the sniper rifle for the five time zoom i believe i'm rocking like a 1.4 sensitivity boost on that and it feels much better to me and well that's the blog from 343 and the updates that are coming for season two honestly i was kind of hoping for a little bit more when it comes to the sandbox update but i'm glad to hear there's a lot of updates coming to the stability on pc we are getting some sandbox updates which is great at least the most important ones i would say i wish we had more updates and changes coming to how csr is dealt out when it comes to playing rank because it just feels super Super inconsistent i'm glad the melee networking has been improved as well i mean that mangler nerf that mangler nerf though but also great news to hear that a custom game browser is on the way which is hopefully maybe with season three i doubt it maybe it'll probably be something that we see next year as the custom game browser took so long in the mcc to come around hopefully that turnaround will be a little bit faster with halo infinite but again let's we'll have to wait and see i'll definitely let you guys know here on the channel but if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out this playlist right here i got link to all my halo news and informational videos right there thanks so much for watching greatly appreciate it catch you on the next one peace out